What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to move objects with the arrow keys with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to move objects around the screen with the arrow keys on the keyboard. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Alright, so in the last video I showed you how to set up a canvas, and I showed you how to build, you know, simple shapes with it. In this video we're going to sort of expand on that, and set up a little thing here to where we can move an object around the screen with the arrow keys and you can't tell but I'm actually clicking the arrow keys on my keyboard to move this little circle around and you can do anything you want I've done a little circle you could do a square you could do a big square a big circle uh, you could use images anything you want uh, the point of this is just to show you how to use actual arrow keys to move things around which is kind of useful so let's check out our code here I've got this file I'm calling arrows.py it's our basic starter code. I made it a little bigger this time, 800 by 600, but everything else is the same. We're using the Sublime Text Editor and Git Bash Terminal as always. So first off, let's create, in the last video, if you didn't see it, check the playlist in the comment section below. I showed you how to create a basic canvas, and we're going to do the same thing this time. But instead of being explicit with width and height, uh, we're going to use variables, which is no big deal. So let's create a variable called width, and let's just put this at 600. And let's create one called height and we'll put it at 400 and we also want x and y coordinates remember with canvas in order to position things you need an x1 y1 x2 y2 so we're just going to define x as let's say this width divided by 2 and then let's create a y and set that as the height divided by 2. okay so now let's just create a canvas so let's go my underscore canvas and that's a canvas. And we want to put it in root, and we want the width to equal W. We want the height to equal H. And let's give this a background of white. And we we'll obviously want to pack this on the screen, as always. So let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down a little bit onto the screen. Okay, so we also want something that we can move around the screen. We could do a square, we can do a rectangle, circle, ellipse. All the things we looked at in the last video you can also do images i'll probably talk about that in the future video but i'm just going to make a little circle a little oval so let's call this uh my circle <laughs> i don't know and it's a my canvas dot create underscore oval and we looked at this in the last video and to create a, an oval you give it the coordinates of top left bottom right so x1 y1 is the top left and x2 y2 is the bottom right just like we looked at in the last video and then whatever that square is kinter will draw an oval inside of it so we want for x1 y1 we just want to do x and y which are these things up here so this would be you know 300 by 200 basically and then for our x2 and y2 we could just make it a little bit bigger so let's go x plus 10 and y plus 10. So we're going for x1 and y1, this is 300 by 200. So we're going over 300, up 200. And then for this one, we're going over 310, up 210. So those are the two coordinates. And then it will draw a box, and then we'll get a little circle here. So uh, if you're not familiar with what I'm doing here, look at the last video. I explained it all in, in more detail. We look at an actual grid system and, and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and save this. This is arrows.py. So let's go Python arrows.py. And I'm in my C GUI directory, as always. So now if we run this, we see we've got our white canvas and we've got this little circle right in the middle. So, okay. Now, obviously, it doesn't do anything yet. We have to write the code to do that. So, what we want to do now is bind our keyboard events to our root window, right? And we've looked at binding things in past videos. Check the playlist if you want to learn more about that. But we can just come down here and go root dot bind. And then the thing we want to bind, and we can bind it to a specific function. So I'm going to create a left function. And I'm going to do these four times. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to call this one left, this one right. We'll call this one up. And we'll call this one down. 
So what actual keyboard event do we want to bind? Well, we want to bind, actually we can just put these in each one of these here too. The sort of character that we want to do for an arrow is just left. That will be the left arrow key. And right will be the right arrow key. Up is the up arrow key, and you guessed it, down is the down arrow key. Notice that these are capitalized. So this is how we actually bind things. And now, whenever the left arrow key gets clicked on our keyboard, this left function will get called. Whenever this right arrow key gets clicked, the right function will get called. So now we need to write all of these functions, left, right, up, and down. So let's go define left, and it's a function, and we need to pass in the event. So this is the keyboard pressing event, basically, right? When we, we click the left button, that's a, an event. We need to pass that event into our function. So let's set an x to equal negative 10, and I'll talk about this in just a second, y to equal zero. Now to actually move this thing, we wanna move something in our canvas. So we call my canvas dot move. And this function is new, we haven't looked at this yet, but this is how we move things. So this function takes like three arguments. First, what do we wanna move? Well, we wanna move my underscore circle. Where do we wanna move it to? Well, we wanna move it x and y. So what is this? Remember x is left and right on our sort of grid system in our canvas, right? So if we wanna move it left, that is negative. How far do we wanna move it left? Let's just move it 10, right? 10 is not very many. It will look like it's sort of you know, moving smoothly if we do 10. We could do 50, you know, we could jump it around quite a bit, but we wanna move it smoothly across the screen, so 10 is good. If we wanted to move it right, it would be 10, positive 10. That would go that way, right? But we want it left, so we can do that. So that's all there is to it. So now let's create three more of these. One, two, three, and let's call this guy right. Let's call this one up. And let's call this one down. And obviously these correspond to left, right, up, and down, right? So for right, we already know what to do. We just move it 10 that way. For up, uh, we don't wanna move it X. We don't wanna move it up left or right. We wanna move it up or down, which is the Y coordinate. So for this, to move it up, it is ironically negative 10. And to move it down, let's change that to zero, it's 10, right? So that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and save this and run this guy. So now I'm gonna hit left, right, up, and down. And every time you hit the keyboard, it, it does a thing. Or you can hold it down and then it does it like that. All right, very cool. So you're noticing we're, we're moving it just 10, right? Like I said, you can change that to anything you want. You know, if, let's go up uh, negative 40, right? So if we save this and run it, every time I click it, boom, it jumps quite a bit. Now notice it will go off the canvas. And if I now go over a few and then back down, you see it, it's moved, right? Move it all the way over, <laughs> this way, all the way down, and then back out. Very cool. So that's all there is to it. Now we did an oval here. We could obviously, we could do just as easily a my canvas create rectangle. We save this, run it. Now it's a little box, right? Change this back to oval. And if we wanna make it bigger, you know, we could say plus 50. Now we have a bigger thing, right? So very cool. And like I said, you could use images too. We'll talk about that probably in a later video. Let's change this to maybe 20. And let's see, I wanna move this back to negative 10. So these are all the same. So it's kind of weird that we have to designate each of these specifically. You could, you could use besides these left, right, up, down, you could use actual keys on the keyboard. So if you wanted to do letters instead, you could fairly easily do that. So let's go root.bind. And here, we don't actually have to designate each one like A or B or 
you know, C or whatever, we can just go key and then let's call the function uh, pressing, right? So here, any key will work as long as it's a letter. The, this key thing doesn't work for things like left, right, up, down, or the shift key or the control key or things like that, but it will work for all letters. So let's create a, a function called pressing and we wanna pass in the event. And here we can do some if statements. First off, let's set our X to zero and our Y to zero. And we can go if event.car for character. So which character are we actually kicking, clicking on the keyboard? If that equals, let's say A, the A button. Well then, we can say X equals negative 10. If, and we can do this two, three, four, so let's say A, let's say F, F would be, or say maybe D, A and D that are right next to each other on the keyboard. This would be 10, so that would be right. Uh, if we change this to Y and Y, let's say, I don't know, the R would be that. And let's say X would be that. And now just like all the other functions we did, we have to do my, well, let me just copy this. Right, like that. Now if we save this and run it, and I press A, it goes that way. If I pass, press D, it goes this way. If I press E, oh wait, what did we say? R, it goes up, and X, it goes down. So obviously this is not as good as using the arrow keys like I'm doing right now, but you know there are certain circumstances where you might wanna do characters on the keyboard, letters, instead of arrow keys. So either way, that's how you do it. So that's how you move things around with the keyboard. You just bind the event to a specific function and then just use the mycanvas.move. And then inside of here, you move whatever you want to do, whether that's a circle or a rectangle or an image or anything else, and then just give it the coordinates X and Y, which you've sort of defined right here. So pretty simple and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out my website, codemy.com, where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.